Hey guys, we are doing a ranking video today. I have not done a ranking video in quite some time. And when I got the latest uh, Pat McGrath Mothership 10 palette, um, I asked if you guys would be interested in that. And I got so many comments saying, yes, yes, please do a ranking. So we are ranking all 10 of Pat McGrath's Mothership palettes. I have all 10. And in fact, for one of the palettes, I have two versions. So. Here we are. All right, so we're gonna start from the bottom and work our way to the top. So we're gonna start with number 10. And number 10, I feel bad even saying this is number 10 because I do really love all of these palettes. They're all, they're all beautiful. They all have gorgeous shades in there. But overall, I would say Mothership number six, this one is Midnight Sun, is my least favorite. And only because, I don't know, when I open up this palette, I feel kind of sad. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just the color story or the colors that she picks. Like I love, I love green, as you guys know. I love greens from cool tone greens to foresty greens to this kind of like olive gold. This actually looks like, uh, like an antique gold kind of green. Um, I, I don't know what, maybe it's the combination of everything, like this purple, orange, green, red situation over here maybe just doesn't resonate with me. Uh, but this is one that I never think to use, I never reach for, and while, again, like, I like individual shades in here, I don't like this whole color story. Like I said, whenever I open it up, it just makes me feel kind of sad. It just doesn't, it doesn't bring a smile to my face. I don't feel inspired. I just feel a little like, hmm, okay. <laughs> This is okay. Uh, so anyway, that is number 10, which is Mothership 6, Midnight Sun. Now, number nine is actually Mothership number three, which is, um, oh my gosh, which one was it called? So one was Subliminal, two was Sublime, this one, Subversive. This one was number three, Subversive. And this, I feel like this has the opposite effect that Midnight Sun had because when I open up this palette, I'm really happy. I love this palette. I think it looks really cool. It's just that I don't use these shades very much. Um, these two shades here, which are almost in every single um, Pat McGrath palette, I don't need to reach into this palette for those shades. And then the rest of these are just shades that I just don't use like these browns are very very deep i don't really use deep purples this really deep um like gun metal kind of uh, darkish gray or whatever like all of these colors are great but when i think of this palette i just think of really deep dark dramatic sort of shades so i never think to reach for this palette but this shade holy smokes i think i did a video wow this must be a gazillion years ago but i did a video where i talked about my favorite shade in every mothership palette and this one definitely was my favorite shade in this palette it's just it's so so beautiful but i just i never reach for this palette i never think to use this palette for shades that i would use um and yeah and it's just a palette full of shades that i wouldn't even use together because the story is a little bit too deep for my skin tone personally um, but it is really really gorgeous and it does make me very very happy when i open it up i think a lot of it is just nostalgia because i remember when pat mcgrath first came out with those three mothership palettes this being the third it was it like broke the internet it was so so exciting yeah and i remember this one was like the well it was the subversive one it was the very funky evening, party out, going clubbing kind of palette. So on one hand, I really love this palette, but on the other, I just never really use it. <laughs> so that is Mothership number three, Subversive. All right, this is number eight on the list. And this I have actually in limited edition packaging. Don't mind the fingerprints. And I did actually have this in the regular black lacquer packaging as well, but I ended up giving that to a friend and held on to this one. So this one actually, yeah, this one actually looks pretty new. That one is where I did all the swatching and playing around or whatever. Uh, but this is Divine Rose too. And I, this is another palette that I think is really, really beautiful, but all of the shades over here, which are the shades that I kind of depend on in the Pat McGrath palettes, like these, are just fun, right? These are just gorgeous, fun. You can have a great time with those, but the six on the right are the ones that I feel like determine whether or not I'm gonna be reaching for this palette, whether or not I'm gonna be thinking of this palette. And all of the shades aside from this one are just a little bit too 
deep for me. Yeah, all the colors are like just a little bit off. Like this one's just a little bit too bright. This one I wish was a little bit more silvery. This one I wish was actually like a little bit deeper so I could use it as liner, but it has like a purpley reddish kind of undertone to it. This one is just straight up peach. So nothing in here really kind of like makes me grab for this one, but it is a really beautiful palette. I mean, I feel like all of Pat McGrath's palettes are very beautiful and they definitely evoke some sort of feeling in me. But this one, I just, yeah, I just don't reach for this one, this Divine Rose too. And I think at this point, there was a lot of Divine Rose going on. So I think memory wise, I don't have like the best memory of this because I remember her teasing this palette and we were like, oh my God, oh my God, what's this gonna be, what's this gonna be? And it ended up being Divine Rose 2. <laughs> we were like, oh, okay, <laughs> okay, I'll buy it anyway. But yeah, anyway, this one is number eight on my list. So number seven on my list is Hutopian Dream. And uh, I really enjoy this palette. We're definitely getting into the palettes now that I really enjoy and that I do reach for, I think of. Um, I really like this shade. This is more of like a, kind of like a watermelon sorbet kind of shade where the one in Divine Rose 2 is more of like a hot pink. Um, and so I find this, at least for my skin tone, I find this a little bit easier to wear. And then, yeah, all of these shades here, I feel like I can very easily create a look. Um, and then in this palette, she actually went with three baked shades and then one kind of like multi-chrome pressed shadow here. So as much as I love the baked shades, I was a little bit disappointed um, in that this kind of special shade was a pressed powder, um, but they are easier to use. I have to admit, the baked shades are very, very flaky. Uh, they're very um, chunky. And unless you use like a glitter glue or something, you probably will experience a little bit of fallout. Uh, but these pressed shadows, uh, while they have a different effect, they are, like I said, they are just easier to use and I don't feel like I experienced that much fallout. So anyway, um, I do like that she included this one. At first I was a little side-eyeing it because I was like, why aren't there just four big shades? Because that's what she's always had, except for number four. But anyway, I digress. Um, I do really enjoy this color story. I think this six pan over here is just very, very pretty. Number six on my list, which has definitely moved down. I think this ranked a little higher when I've talked about Mothership Palettes in the past. I don't know if I've actually done a ranking video. I think I must have. Um, but this one has definitely fallen to number six, and this is Bronze Seduction. This was, this was like my favorite, favorite Pat McGrath palette. When this first came out, I was like, yes, yes. This, <laughs> this is what we want. This is what we need. And I loved it. And I still love it. I think it's still gorgeous. I think this red baked shadow here really just makes this whole palette just pop. So I think the reason why this palette may have dropped in my ranking here is that all the shades over here, aside from this one, all the shades over here are very deep. And so I kind of have to mix them or I have to be very careful when I use them. And now I feel like I have a lot more Pat McGrath Mothership palettes where I don't have to be too careful, which we'll get to. I don't have to be too careful. And so they those kind of knocked this one kind of down the uh, down the ladder a little bit, but this is still a gorgeous palette. I still love this palette. I still love this shade a lot. Like I said, the red, the big shadows in here are really, really pretty. Like I love this one up here. It's like a rose gold. I don't know if you can see, maybe right there. It's like a rose gold. It's so, so much fun. And this shade, it's almost like a pressed glitter, but so much better because it's, it's like a Pat McGrath formula. So it's super creamy. Oh, and it's just gorgeous. So you can get a great like evening look, but for like an everyday palette or a palette that I'm gonna reach for a lot or think of to use, this is not the palette, at least not anymore. So anyway, that is Bronze Seduction. Number five on my list is Mothership 4. And this used to rank a lot higher as well because this was such a unique Mothership. These were all pressed um, shimmery shades. So some of them are more metallic than others. They are at least a satin, like I wanna say these two shades here are probably the least shiny, but they're still shiny. Um, and these were just magnificent. Like every single shade in here works beautifully. They're really creamy. Um, this was the palette that she came out with in collaboration with the Met, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Um, and it was just gorgeous. This shade right here is my absolute favorite. It is so gorgeous. It's like minky a minky cool toned gray 
slightly, slightly purple in like a weird light, you can see purple in there. This is just what dreams are made of. So this is the palette that I actually have two of. So this is the basic black lacquer packaging. And then she did that Star Wars collaboration and she basically packaged this mothership in this super gold packaging, which oh, is so dirty. There, I think that's, that's a little bit better. Okay. <laughs> Um, so this one I have not touched. This one is my collector's mothership four. But isn't that so beautiful? I just really, really love these shades. And this palette, I always considered, still consider to be uh, like an auxiliary palette, like a palette that I would use with uh, maybe a, a boring, everyday, neutral kind of palette if I just wanna spice it up a little bit. This is a great palette to pull out and just use like one of these shades to just sort of like spice it up a little bit. So that's number five on my list, and that is Mothership 4. Why can't I remember the name? Is the name on here? Mothership 4 Decadence. This is the Decadence palette. All right, number four on my list is Mothership 2 Sublime. I bet you guys were wondering when this was gonna pop up. Um, this palette is just really gorgeous. With these four satin shades and these two matte shades here, so basically, again, the six shades over here on the left, I feel like I can create like a really easy look. You guys know, I, I don't get that fancy schmancy with my eye looks. Um, I like really basic looks. And these three across the top, or this one, this one, and this one, I create like a really easy, fast look, or just these two, really easy to create like a nice easy look. And then of course we've got this green and you guys know I love green. If I'm going to use one color to kind of amp up a neutral look, it's gonna be green usually. <laughs> um, and then we've got this great gold and then this shade is like a duochrome. I don't know if you can see, so is this one. Anyway, this one is just a really, really fun palette. And I think just like the subversive palette, I just have really good memories of this palette. This was number two, it came out together with one, two and three. It's just, it's great. And when I open this one up, I think it's the green. I just am so happy when I see this palette. This one is just, mm, it's just such a winner. So that's number four on my list, which is Mothership number two, Sublime. All right, we are down to the top three. And I feel like these three could probably rotate kind of depending on what day it is. But right now, at this moment, <laughs> number three is the newest one, is Mothership number 10, which is Moonlit Seduction. I really like this palette. I don't know if it's because my ex, why were my expectations so low? My expectations were really low for this palette. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because I thought it was gonna be another kind of like Divine Rose palette. I don't know if it was gonna be or feel redundant from the other palettes. And you know, I have to say, when I look at the six shadows over here, do I see any earth shattering shades? No, not really. And then we have just pressed shadows over here. We don't even have any of the big shadows, which I'm a big fan of, but I really love this palette. I think it's the three satin shades over here, metallic, this is actually more of a metallic shade, that I really, really love. And this shade, I feel like is so easy to work with. When I looked at it in the pan, I thought, mm, too deep for me, too deep for my skin tone to like just use as a simple transition, but it works really well. And I actually have this palette on today and I have that shade just on the outside and in my socket line and it's perfect. But I really like also like the look of this palette. I feel like it is a typical Pat McGrath palette, but she just turned the saturation down a little bit just a little bit. It's almost like the Midnight Sun palette. You know how the, the colors, like the purple and the green and the orange, it, you know, like the saturation is turned down a little bit. The brightness is turned down a little bit. This one, however, doesn't make me sad. I like, I really like the shades in here. And while I love those baked shadows, I really do also like these pressed um, shadows here because they are easier to work with. And I've just been reaching for this one a lot. I really, really love this shade up here, this one. <sighs> That one gets the heart going. So this is number three, which is Mothership 10, Moonlit Seduction. Okay, number two, I'm sure you can guess, this is Divine Rose palette. This one, it's just easy to use. What can I say? The six shadows over here just work for my skin tone. This is probably the lightest color story that she has come out with in any of her Mothership palettes. They're usually pretty deep, which is fine, but it's just a little bit harder for someone with really light, <laughs> really, pale skin to work with. So this one I just really appreciate because I can use it 
easily, just very easily. Like this shade is like a no brainer for a little bit of dimension adding, a little bit of like crease color, transition, blah, blah, blah. And then we have one of those shades that I love. It's like a little taupe, but there's like a little, like a slight, slight bit of pink to it. Just a slight, <laughs> slight bit. And then we've got three satins, which actually make a beautiful look if you wanna do these three shades. Um, and then we have these baked, shadows over here, which are gorgeous. So these three baked shadows are really smooth. They are not um, like super chunky. This fourth one is super chunky, which is the ones that I feel like you will get a little bit of fallout um, that you see a little bit more of in the other palettes. There's only one in this one. So I just feel like this is a very practical palette. This is a very, very easy to use, um, everyday kind of palette. So this is number two for me, Divine Rose, which was, which mothership was this? Number seven, because I think Midnight Sun was number six. And as you guys guessed, this hasn't changed. If I've done a ranking video before, this has not changed. I think I have. Anyway, this is number one, which is her very first palette. This is the Mothership One Subliminal palette. And this is number one on my list. This is still my all time favorite. I can't believe how new this palette looks. I take really good care of my makeup. I don't I don't like when it gets messy <laughs> on the frame. I usually wipe that off. But I use this one. I use this palette quite a bit and I, and I love this as like my matte transition. I love using this satin shade as like my accent color because it has that minky minkiness to it. It's like a brownish gray with like a little bit of like a silver tone to it. I just think it's gorgeous. And we've got this purple, which is uh, relatively neutral when you work it in with these other colors. It just keeps everything very cool toned. And then we've got these great baked shadows. The blue, I think, is like the identifier in this particular palette. And then some other fun, like multi-chrome shades in there, or duochromes. I definitely don't use these baked fun shadows that much when I reach for this palette. It is always for these six over here. Um, but I just love this palette. I think it is, you know, nostalgia wise, memory wise. I just think good things when I think of this palette, number two and number three. Um, and I always, always think of this palette if I'm like, hmm, I feel like doing a cool tone eye look. This is probably the first palette I think of. And I love it. I love a cool tone look. I think you can keep it pretty neutral if you want, if maybe you just stick with these but I just think it's gorgeous. And yeah, so that is number one on my list, which is Mothership One Subliminal. Well, that's it, you guys. Those are my Pat McGrath Mothership palettes ranked. That was very difficult, especially once I got into like one through six, very difficult. And like I said, those first three, definitely on rotation. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.